All right, so for today, we will show you the presentation of what workshops we will be holding on the next few weeks and also some other platforms that you can use to create your own blog from scratch without a single line of code. Um, I was already in that, in that comment as well because I wanted to create a website and I didn't know how to do it. Can you still hear me? Okay, yeah. Yes. Um, so that's why I thought like creating this presentation and these workshops would be great for all of you. So let's get started on today's agenda. We will first do some introductions in case you don't know Sabrina or I or myself. <laughs> um, then what is the Mills of Community? Uh, why would you want to create a blog? It's very important. And then some overview of low code or no code platforms that you can use. Um, finally, I will just show the next workshop dates and some Q&A in case you have any questions at all. All right, so for today, I'm Alexander Martinez. I am a developer advocate at MuleSoft, previously a MuleSoft developer for three or four years. Um, and I have five MuleSoft certifications. Sabrina? Hi, I'm the Associate Manager Community Marketing at MuleSoft. I've worked here about a year and a half and my role really encompasses our ambassador and our mentor program. So we have a few of our MuleSoft mentors and ambassadors on the call today, uh, as well as if you ever wanna write a blog for MuleSoft, post something on socials, uh, I'm the gal. So just reach out to me uh, and hopefully after today, you'll have some new blog ideas to share. Awesome. Okay, so just a little bit about the MuleSoft community if you are new here. So we have a really big MuleSoft community. There's over 80,000 MuleSoft practitioners who you know, network either on social media, on our MuleSoft Help Center, uh, in local regional meetup groups, on online meetup groups like the Women Who Mule group. And really, you know, wherever you meet with the community, you are there because you're trying to learn from others as well as share your own knowledge. And so we really see three key pillars. So one is that you can share and evangelize your work in the MuleSoft community. Two is that you can learn and get inspired by how other users are leveraging any point platform. And three is that you get to network with MuleSoft experts. And these MuleSoft experts can either be within our community as well as you'll gain access into, you know, MuleSoft product developers and other MuleSoft developers from companies all around the world. And so this really helps you not only build meaningful connections, but also you can discover new opportunities uh, within the community as well. And so just a quick plug, I would say for our community, uh, but you can join our community online. And so one of our biggest places to meet us is through LinkedIn. We have a MuleSoft developer group and a MuleSoft developer showcase page. And both of these are really created assets for you to learn. So on our showcase page, we share everything that's upcoming in the community from meetups to blogs that are going live to new product releases. And then our group is where you can ask questions about these assets. So network, uh, you know, share your own creation of content that you're making. And then the other place is that we do have a section on the mulesoft.com blog, uh, which we'll kind of talk about, you know, today as you work to create your own blog. Um, and it's called blog, the developer guide section on the mulesoft.com blog. And so this is where, you know, we search out your technical, um, content about MuleSoft, your personal experiences learning MuleSoft, and really anything in between. Um, so that's kind of where we'll talk about why it's important to start your blog and also the opportunities that can arise from beginning your own blog. So with that, Alex and I are going to both kind of go over this slide together, but there are a lot of reasons of why you would want to create a blog and really what we call become a content creator. So the first one is that it's always important, no matter what industry you're in, to develop your personal brand. So for me personally, I am not technical. And instead, I try to write blogs about, you know, the industry or about how you can become a great content contributor. And this helps me develop my personal brand in community marketing. Uh, you know, Alex, she'll share really technical blogs and this is where she can showcase her expertise and others learn from it they share her blogs and it actually encourages them to try out new things with mulesoft and the many other technologies that she writes about 
Uh, you can also build your portfolio, grow your professional network, learn about a topic. Uh, and then the biggest one here is that each quarter we select the top community contributed blogs and you can earn Nielsoft training as well as the recognition that comes from that blog is tremendous. Uh, it really highlights, you know, the best of the best in the community. It not only showcases your, you know, industry or technical knowledge, but we actually look for high quality blogs. So if you're just even sharing about how you got started in a high tech role, that could make it into the quarterly roundup if it's well written. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, we're always looking for community content for the mealsoft.com blog. So, you know, we'll search out great writers who can then share um, their information on the Mealsoft blog. So Whitney, she's in attendance here today. Uh, she's written some fantastic blogs for us. Um, Sophia, she also wrote a great blog for us. And so this really helps you kind of expand, you know, your role and also see your work really published on a great stage. Um, and then lastly, we have a Mealsoft mentor program. Uh, we have a few Mealsoft mentors in the chat. Tony, Diane, uh, Whitney was a former Mealsoft mentor. And, you know, here what these mentors do is they're like the top community members and they're creating content that helps so many individuals in our community learn. And it all started usually with them writing a blog on their own, putting themselves out there and you know working to build once again that personal brand that we're able to see just to uh tell a little bit of my perspective uh, just as sabrina said like you can showcase your expertise it, it, you don't have to be a technical person so for example if you're in business uh, you're a project manager or you're a product owner whatever you are you can just write anything about any of your experiences you can even write about I don't know, one project that you were working on that you didn't know how to solve something in specific and how you solved it. And you can also create technical blog posts about something in DataWeave or something in cybersecurity or whatever you want. Um, and the thing is like, you don't have to use MuleSoft. The, the, you, we're we're going to show you how to create your own blog, create your own personal brand. So. For example, I sometimes write about mental health or about any soft skills or stuff like that. And that's also okay. You can write about anything that you want. It's your blog, so you control whatever you want to pub publish on it. And also, um, I wanted to mention that when you are creating technical blog posts, you don't notice uh, at first, but eventually you start noticing that you start learning more when you create technical blog posts for other people. And this is because when you're writing for someone else to understand, you kind of do more research because you think of the questions that they may have or think about um, where they might, they might be stuck or like what kind of knowledge they have to have prior to reading your blog post. So you think about all of those things and you start creating better and better content every time and you start learning more because of that. So it's also useful for you to learn more about a topic. <laughs> and yes, um, you also get to show showcase your expertise. So if you're creating technical uh, blog posts or if you're creating stuff about business or stuff like that, people will start associating all of the things you write with your personal brand. So if you want to, for example, be an expert in DataWeave, you can start creating a lot of posts about DataWeave and people will eventually start seeing you like an expert in DataWeave. Or if you want to be in cybersecurity or in Java or in whatever you want. And that's um, my perspective on why writing is, is great. All right, now I'm gonna show you some of the low code or no code platforms. Um, this basically needs that you don't really need to touch code or to know how to develop a website. So you can just use clicks or drag and drop or do whatever you need to configure, whatever you're doing. You don't have to know how to program uh, in web or like how to do front end, back end, whatever. Um, it's basically what we're doing with MuleSoft, right? We're just like drag and dropping stuff, uh, seeing every everything in a visual way. So this is the equivalent. So the first steps that almost all of these platforms uh, require of you is to just create an account with your email address. 
create a new site. Some, some uh, platforms let you have different sites. Um, personalize your site with a template or a theme or your preferred colors or fonts. So you can also give it your, your personal touch on your colors or even your logo or whatever you prefer. You can set up a menu if you want to have any menu, for example, like home or about me or data with topic or meals of topic or GitHub topic or whatever you prefer. And once you have all that set up, that's the like the heavy lifting. Once you have everything done, then you just have to start creating content. So to create your content, you just have to upload it or write it in your site and then publish or, or schedule it. <laughs> and that's it. You just have to repeat it for every blog post that you're writing. So it's as easy as that. You don't have to learn how to code in HTML <laughs> or do any other stuff. You just have to go and create your website and that's it. So here are some of the platforms that we're going to see in the next workshops and also some other platforms that you can use. Um, first, I'm gonna show you Ghost. So if you go, go to ghost.org, you will see this website. It's written in JavaScript using Node.js. It doesn't matter. It's just if you wanted to know how it's made. Um, the code is also open source. So if you ever wanted to actually touch the code on the website, you can do that. And it's free, but it offers a pro plan with uh, more functionality, for example, like uh, receive payments or stuff like that. And the main features are a dashboard, you have themes, you can handle newsletters, you can have analytics, like how many viewers are getting into your site, where are they from, all of that stuff. And uh, integrations, for example, with Slack, with Unsplash, um, they have really cool stuff. And some examples of our community using Ghost, we have Joshua Ernie, um, Millsoft Ambassador, if you go to journey.io, you will see this cool website that he has. And uh, Joshua mainly writes about DataWeave. So if you want to become an expert in DataWeave, go to this site, it's awesome. And uh, you can see like this last post that he has, the 10 most important things I did in my twenties. Like you can also write about any other stuff. You don't have to stick to just one specific topic. Next we have Edgar Moran. Uh, he's also a Mulesoft ambassador, and his site is uselmoran.com. And this is also written in Ghost. As you can see, like they have very similar components. For example, we have like the subscribe here at the top or the Facebook page. And then here with Edgar, we have the home about me and then a search and also a login. So um, the some of these will look similar, but also like they're different. For example, here where you can actually see all of the blog posts looks different than what Joshua had here. And this is because you can choose your theme for your own website. And some of them are free, some of them are paid. So you can buy them if, the, if you want them to look better um, or you can also use the free ones and that's also okay. They're also cute. Next we have Wix. So if you go to Wix.com, you will see this website. Uh, this is my favorite because this is the one that I use. Um, so it has different uh, features to it. It has an AI product that helps you choose the right look and feel for your needs. It's called Wix Addy. Um, and you just have to answer some questions about what you want to do with your site. And then it will magically create the site for you, personalized for what you want. We also, uh, it also has a drag and drop product. So if you want to have even more customization than just the uh, Wix Addy one, you can use a Wix editor and you can drag and drop all of the components. So if you want to have uh, a menu, you can put the menu there and put it exactly where you want it. You can personalize uh, animations or anything like that. And it also has a code customization for advanced developers. So if you want to, again, to touch the code, you can also do this with um, a product called Velo by Wix. It also provides apps for online stores, for accepting bookings, upload videos or music, create forums and offer memberships, uh, a lot of more applications that you can use. And it's a, uh, 
it, it has a broader possibility to create a complete website and not just a blog. And the only thing with it is that the free version is very limited. Um, and if you want to, for example, use a, a custom domain, you will have to pay uh, monthly and it is preferred. But if you wanted to just use a free website and not have a lot of ads, maybe this is not the best for you. Now, some of our community using Wix. First, we have Whitney, former MuleSoft mentor, now MuleSoft employee, WhitneyAkinola.io. You can see how it, it looks like. Here is her blog. Um, you can see, like, you can, you can personalize all of this, but it will look very similar to Prostep, <laughs> as Serena just shared in the, in the chat. So, um, the website that I manage is prosep.com. It's also made in Wix, so you can see some of the different components that I have here. The one that I did here in Prosep, it's created on Wix Addy, which is the AI assistant. So I didn't have to do a lot of configuration to get all of this done. I just had to answer the questions from the AI and it, it created this website for me. Next, we have WordPress. So if you go to wordpress.com or wordpress.org, there are different things. Um, there, it's a free and open source content management system. It's written in PHP using MySQL. Again, if you want to know the details, um, it's, it, the features include a template system or themes, just as we saw in Ghost. And it was originally created as a bug blog publishing system, but now supports other web content like mailing lists, membership sites, or online stores. And some of our community using WordPress, we have Sarah Khalid. If you know her, she's like the expert on MuleSoft and Salesforce and everything related. Uh, she's a MuleSoft mentor right now. You can go to sarahinthecloud.wordpress.com and you will see her site. This is more or less how it feels. and. As you can see, she has some ads here because WordPress, I believe, adds um, adds ads <laughs> to your website if you're not paying for it. Um, but also, like for example, you don't have to create a domain. You can just use like whatever your name is and then .wordpress.com and it's free. So you can also just use it for free. Another MuleSoft mentor using it is uh, Prudby. So if you go to Prudvi uh, Raj Krish .wordpress .com, you will see this site. And again, as you can see, the look and feel of all of these different platforms are very similar, even though you change like the colors or the themes or the menus that you show, they stick to more or less the, the same basic blocks. And other platforms that you can use, you can also use Blogger. So if you go to blogger.com, it's very, very similar to WordPress. Um, you can also use Webflow. I haven't tried it, but I've seen a lot of marketing about it. Um, so maybe it's good, but I think it also, it's like similar to Wix in the sense that um, you can have a free account, but it would be best if you paid for it. Then we have Hashnode, so hashnode.com. It uses Markdown. If you're familiar with Markdown, um, then this site will be for you. If you're not familiar with Markdown, it might be a little bit hard to understand at first. So if you want to try it, go ahead. But all of the blog posts written here are using Markdown. So if you're not familiar with it, I wouldn't recommend it. I also saw Squarespace.com and I haven't tried it. I have no idea what it is, but I saw that it does more or less the same thing. So if you want to try it, go ahead. Um, there's also appsheet.com that is from Google. And I think it it's more useful for technical blog posts, but not for like any other like business or stuff like that. Um, and finally, GitHub pages, pages.github.com. It also uses Markdown and you do have to know Git if you want to use these. So Hashnode and GitHub. Uh, just use them if you know Markdown and GitHub, just use it if you know Git. <laughs> if not, then any of the other ones are great for you. And finally, the next workshop dates. So this was just the, the first presentation to give you an overview on everything that we have and why would you want to create a blog. 
but the actual workshops will be held uh, first weeks will be on Thursday, October 7. Whitney is going to go with this uh, workshop. Then we have Ghost on Wednesday, October 13. I'm going to do that one. And finally, we have WordPress on October 20 with uh, a special guest from Women Who Code. So uh, if you want to try one of these platforms, these three platforms, and you don't know how to start, you can just uh, go into the link that Sabrina just put there in the chat and register to whichever you want. If you want several or if you just want one, go ahead, whatever you choose. And we will show you in a practical workshop how to do it. So if you get ready to do it in one hour, and we're going to show you from start, like how to get started, how to create your, your account until how to finish with your blog. And that's it. So Q&A. I see Monique put just a suggestion in the chat, which I'll read aloud. But it, he says, if I may add one suggestion. Also, Monique writes a fantastic blog. So another great resource. Um, he's a MuleSoft ambassador, so definitely reach out to him. But he says, if I may add one suggestion, if you're serious about your blog for long term, I would avoid using subdomains from WordPress. If you choose to move away from WordPress, then you might end up paying the per year redirection fees to WordPress so that all historical link and audiences continue to work. Otherwise, it's a great tool. That's good to keep in mind. Yeah, thank and you. Will we be sharing the slides presentation? Yes, uh, we will be posting it to the meetup um recap for this event so you can find it there all right yeah shivani you can just register for the week's workshop and whitney will show you how to use it yeah it's also my favorite platform i would really recommend you to use it <laughs> all right are there any more questions what paid level of weeks do you recommend um it really depends on what you want because i think the most basic one uh it's only to like connect your domain or something like that um so if you just want to do that that's fine but then there are some other things for example if you want to accept payments or if you want to do more things then you have to pay for like more uh, of the monthly pay yeah, Whitney says that she uses premium. I don't know which one I have, but I pay for ProsDev and for my personal one too. For something like what we would be doing, you can use a free one um, for just to have a blog and not com not connect to your domain. You can just have the free one and that's fine. And if you wanted to connect to a domain, then um, I'm sure Whitney will show you in the workshop <laughs> all of the different plans that you have. But yeah, I guess a basic one for just connecting the domain would be fine. I want to try Webflow. What is the best advice? I haven't tried it, Stefan, um, to be honest. I don't know if anyone else in the audience have tried Webflow, but I haven't. Um, I may do that sometime and I will let you know, uh, but so far I haven't tried it. I just know that it's similar to Wix. Okay, so we have some special announcements before you go. <laughs> uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out to Sabrina uh, or myself. There are our emails. Um, and Sabrina, do you want to announce the stuff? <laughs> sure, yes. So I'm sure many of you have seen this posted all over <laughs> our MuleSoft channels, if you're a member of those. Um, but we do have a MuleSoft hackathon going on right now. Uh, it ends November 1st at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, more information is available at mulesoft.devpost.com. Um, and really, it is just an awesome opportunity for beginners, uh, for well-experienced MuleSoft users, where you can you know, test out using any point platform. Uh, we have 50% off MuleSoft training courses that you can also take. And we have over $35,000 of prizes that can be won. Uh, it's also our MuleSoft mentors are coaching. So if you're you know, maybe wanting to get started with MuleSoft, not sure how to get started with MuleSoft, I definitely recommend the hackathon. Um, all projects are awesome. So don't feel bad if you've never used it before, but you still want to try creating something, do it. Uh, we highly recommend it. 
And let me post, I'll post that link in the chat right now. Well, you do that. Um, so just to let you know, you can contribute to a new education exam. So the MCD level two for Mule 4 is being developed right now by the training uh, area. And they are looking for um, subject matter experts to help them on creating the questions or just reviewing the questions or um, assigning the points to each question. So if you are interested in participating, um, please fill out that survey. Serena, can you put the sur survey link in the chat? Yes, I was just searching for it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so um, yes, you can just fill out this uh, the form. They're gonna ask for some uh, time commitment from you, but if you don't have the time right now, you can still fill out the form and just let them know. I think in the final question, it asks if you will be able to participate or not. And if you don't have the time right now, but you want to participate, you can just tell them in the forum that you are not able to do it right now, but you want to participate in the future. So fill out the survey. There's nothing for you to lose there. And finally. <laughs> yes. So we have an ongoing research survey uh, about MuleSoft. And so this is definitely for more of our technical folks, so MuleSoft developers and architects. Um, we are really trying to improve the MuleSoft develop, developer.mulesoft.com website, uh, as well as our community programs based on the information in this survey. I will also post this in the chat. Um, in addition to this, we will be looking for individuals to interview. Um, I'll be sending more information about that out at a later date to our community. But if you already know you would like to be interviewed, uh, please email me and then I can make sure to get you in touch um, with the right people. All right. So that was actually pretty quick. I was waiting <laughs> for more answers. <laughs> yeah, questions. Sorry. Yeah, we do have time. So if you have any questions about the MuleSoft blog and how you can write for that. Um, I'm happy to go into more detail. I kind of just rushed up through it, um, but we are always looking for content contributors there. So if you would like to know how you can maybe get featured or what topics we look for, um, I'm happy to go through that as well. A day and for the MuleSoft blog recommended format. Yes. So yes, it depends on what type of topic you're writing. So if you're writing a highly technical how-to, usually the format there is about five pages, um, including the images that you're using, and it should tell a story. So it should not look like MuleSoft documentation. So start with what's the problem you're trying to solve, how you can solve it, and then why someone would want to start this. The other blog format, which Whitney, um, has a great example is she shared her MuleSoft journey. Um, so this is different where it's in sense of how did you get started using MuleSoft? Why did you get started using MuleSoft? What was your training experience? How did you feel going through this? Um, how it's helped your career, hindered your career? And that is a little bit longer, I would say less pictures um, and more so just about like training. We also have industry focused blogs. These are another format where it's more of like answering a big thinking question of, you know, why, how does MuleSoft fit into this? Uh, why would someone use it? Um, you know, anything like that. And then Colleen, what is hot in market right now? What content are you looking for more right now? So we do have, let me put this in the chat. Um, we have, a doc that has kind of all of the top content that we're looking for right now. Uh, basically, we right now we're really focusing on either MuleSoft journeys, um, how to get started, why you got started. And then we are also looking for a little bit more industry focused topics. Um, that said, if you do have a highly technical topic, a how to you want to write, it uh, doesn't mean it won't get selected. It just needs to be broad enough that there's additional use cases. Um, we also always look for customer stories. So Sophia actually has a great example. Um, her and one of her coworkers wrote a mix of how they got started with MuleSoft and then also how they completed their first MuleSoft project. Um, so you can kind of be creative. I would say as long as it's not super niche, 
um, it will get posted onto the blog. And yes, Whitney, thank you for posting your example. Um, that is a great example of a training blog. And then let me find Sophia's. This is the mix of a story. And yes, Nisha, definitely. I would suggest that one of the hot things are real world examples of a use case or key challenges that you had that were addressed with MuleSoft and how. Definitely. that. As long as you put that into your blog, it will get pu published um, on the MuleSoft site. And also we have meetups like these. So if, you know, I know this is about writing blogs, um, but if you want to transform that blog into a presentation, that is also something that we can help you with as well. And this is the um, blog submission form, actually. And yes, y'all reveal confidential information. Yes. So we, we are also very um, aware of this. And so you can also make up something. Like as long as you, it's based on a real use case, it does not have to be the actual numbers or connections that you used. Uh, it can be something made up. All right. Any more questions or suggestions? <laughs> about anyone, if anyone has like already a, a website or something, do you want to give us any suggestions about what were your biggest issues creating it? Um, I'm curious about Manic. I know that you don't use any platform or any CMS for your blog. What technologies do you use? Yes, I know you don't use CMS. You've said that a lot of times. <laughs> jbake and i'm curious do you have to program anything like the the code interesting well i have never heard of that <laughs> but if anyone wants to try it <laughs> you can also try jbake and ascii doc yeah, Wix Addy, you can just like it asks you questions about if you like if you want to create a blog, if you want to create a podcast or stuff like that, then you just have to like, click and answer whatever you want and it will like create magically the website for you. Oh, yes, yeah, the logo. I use well, Wix also has a product to create your own logo using Wix. Um, but I didn't like it. <laughs> so I ended up using Canva to just like take a, um, a template about a lo random logo and then I just personalized to mine. So yeah, Canva is another tool that you can use. I use it a lot. <laughs> what site is that? Let me send it canva.com. So you can, I've used a free account for years for months and you can just have a free account and you can search for I don't know if you want to create a logo you can search for logos or if you want to create an Instagram post a Facebook post whatever you want to create there are tons of templates that are free for you to use and only if you want to pay for like a very specific template you can pay for it or you can have like the Canva premium account or whatever, and you will have more functionality. But I've used the free version for a lot of time and it's pretty much okay. One other tool we won't really get into, but LinkedIn, you know, if you don't want to create a separate website, uh, you can create LinkedIn articles and really build your personal brand there. So you can create, you know, short or long form blogs, automatically post them to your networks. Um, and that's a great, easy way to get started. Uh, also, if you're not sure if you feel comfortable, you know, creating a consistent po blog posting, I think that's another thing that uh, each of our workshops will go into, but the importance of having consistency, LinkedIn kind of gives you leeway there where you can write a blog, test it out, you know, tomorrow, and then maybe you don't write again for a few months and then you post again. Um, so slow, it's more of like a slow build for your blog um, and, let, and faster to post what you're wanting to post. 
Yeah, the only downside about using LinkedIn is that it's very hard to find all of the articles. Yes, yeah. Mm. The videos, uh, Diane asked, I see you have videos posted on your site. Alexandra, do you ever max out on your video limit? Um, I post all of my videos in YouTube and then I just embed the YouTube link in two weeks um, and that's good enough. So I don't really, because I know that Wix has uh, a, a max um, gigabytes or megabytes of videos that you can host. So I don't really use that. I just put it on YouTube. Nice. Manik is saying that he hosts the static site on GitLab and Netlify. And you can also host it on GitHub. Yeah, actually the GitHub pages would, would work on that. If you wanted to have like just all of your site in a repository or something like that, you can just use GitHub pages. But yes, the thing about that is that you need to know Git and Markdown. <laughs> yes, Whitney says, one more thing about Wix is they make it easy to do social posts, newsletters, and embed stock photos from Unsplash, Stutter, uh, Shutterstock, and Wix photos. Yes, that is super easy to use. And I think, I know Ghost has an Unsplash integration, but I'm not 100% sure what it does. But I, I think like you can also search for Unsplash photos and put them directly there on your blog post um, or on your cover photo or use it there directly. What about Medium? Um, yeah, you can also use Medium, but the thing, well, I feel that Medium is more for like stories or for um, more of like just text kind of content. And I don't think that content with pictures or with code is, it, it doesn't look like, like that good um, because it has a lot of formatting, like uh, on the paragraphs, like if you do a new line, it will add like a huge chunk of space. So you will end up with a very, very long post with very few information because you keep doing a new line in a new line. So I, wouldn't recommend it for code, but but you can also use it. Um, a lot of people use Medium to do their personal stuff. So if they overcame something or if they wanted to share about their advancements on career or stuff like that, they can use Medium for that. Manik says, my opinion for starting a blog is the same as Alex and others, use CMS so you can focus on building content. Once you have content, you can then think of alternatives. Yeah, I agree. And Whitney says you can also write guest posts on Prasdev and DZone. And yes, <laughs> I didn't want to advertise myself, but <laughs> yes, if you want to create a blog post and you don't know where to do it or how to start, you can use Prasdev.com. Uh, you can just reach out to me. And I will help you. I do reviews for all of my blog posts. So I will give you suggestions on how to improve your content um, or like any kind of advice that I can give you about your content. And then we'll publish it on Prostep. <laughs> or you can do as Whitney, like she writes for her own blog and she writes for Prostep sometimes. So she has like two different sets that can redirect to her own website. So if you also want to write for Prasdev and you want to redirect to your own website saying like, I have more content in my blog here, that's also okay. You can do that. Maybe one last call for questions and then we can give you all 15 minutes back uh, for your day. There's nothing else. All right, looking forward to seeing you all in the workshops. Hopefully you get to do your blogs. Yes. Tony, no, I don't use Patreon. I don't know if anyone if anyone else does. Hey, Diane, yes, the workshops will be recorded. So don't worry about that. You can just check out the recording. The thing is that you won't be able to ask questions, but you can also like send us emails with any questions. So no worries about that. 
Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, and also, there is another women whom you'll meet up tomorrow uh, in the EMEA time zone. So if you are interested in hearing um, from some more MuleSoft mentors and others in our ecosystem, um, definitely would recommend attending as well. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks,